emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. The scruffy cutting mat is down, and that can only mean one thing. It's time to teach you how to do some weathering technique. Yeah, my scruffy mat is down because this is a messy technique. Now, in the past, I've shown you how to make your models look scruffy and dirty and add a layer of grime and post-shading using oil paints in what I call a gunk wash, where you put the oil paint on, you rub it off, and then you let it dry. Now, if you've tried this, you'll know the downside of the gunk wash technique, as I called it, is that it takes at least five days for the oil paint to dry and that is a pain in the backside sometimes especially when you're in the middle of a project and you just want to get on you have to wait for five days to let those oil paints dry before you can go and do anything else well worry not and panic not help is at hand there is another way you can do a gunk wash but not have to wait the five days you can use instead of oil paints you can use enamels now for this demonstration very quick one what i'm going to be using is my pot of Ammo by MIG Streaking Effects Streaking Grime, AMIG 1203. Now, this isn't the only one you can use. You can pretty much use any enamels, but the streaking effects are basically specially thinned enamel paints that are designed for weathering. You can buy this as a standalone pot, or you can get it as part of a weathering kit. But this is my favourite go-to. There also are different streaking grimes. There's slightly different code numbers uh, for different colours. There's a streaking grime for DAC colours. There's a different streaking grimes as dark and light. So have a look around. I've just got this one, and I particularly like this one. It's a nice kind of ready, dirty brown colour. So what do you do? Well, dead simple. First of all, you take the thing you want to weather, and you basically, quite simply, brush the streaking grime all over it, carelessly, like you do with an old paint gunk wash. You just get your brush, and you just go with the streaking grime. You don't need to slap it on really, really sort of thickly. Slap it on. As long as you're covering it, you're absolutely fine. And then. All you do is, after about 10 or 15 minutes, or in this case about half an hour, because I left it to do the other bits, uh, all you do, get yourself a cotton bud or Q-tip to our colonial cousins. And simply rub it off. And it's as simple as that. Now what I'm doing is I'm keeping the cotton bud horizontal because I want to keep the streaking grime in the recesses. This is like a gunk wash, this is basically a way to, at the same time, tint and dirty and discolour the model overall, and also get a darker colour into all your panel lines and recesses and things like that, and vents there, just to give that kind of depth. So it's like doing a filter and a panel line wash, or a pin wash, at the same time. If you're wondering where I'm wearing gloves, that's why I'm wearing gloves. Now the advantage of this method is that it's a much thinner layer than oil paint. You're not putting on tons and tons of paint. As I knock the camera, my apologies. You're not putting on a massive amount of paint. It's a much thinner layer. But the main advantage is it dries much quicker. This would be fully cured and able to be, you know, worked over after about 24 hours, as opposed to five days for your oil paints. So all you need to do, basically brush it on, not massively, but brush on a nice good coat of it. Give it 10 or 15 minutes, up to about, I've found up to about half an hour, 45 minutes is the most you want to leave it. Because you leave it too long, obviously it'll be hard to get off. You'll be able to get it off without using thinners. And the trick of this method is to use it without using any thinners. About 15, 20 minutes, at the very most half an hour. You know, go and make a cup of tea, read a few websites. And then just rub it off. And there you go, that's it done. There are some important things to consider. If you want to protect your paintwork and your decals, before you go ahead and do this, you can put down a layer of gloss varnish onto the model. That will give you a nice smooth surface that it will be easier to remove the enamel paint from. However, you don't have to do that. You might be surprised to know, if I tell you now, that there's no gloss varnish over this paint and I only finished putting the decals on last night there's no protective layer over the decals there's no gloss varnish protecting them i'm just being gentle and i'm gently removing the paint 
softly enough that I'm not damaging the decals I've put down and I'm not taking the paint off so if, you, uh, if you're careful you don't need to do a gloss coat now that does make a difference if you do a gloss coat first then when you rub the enamel off you won't get any enamel collecting on the flat areas it'll just stay within the recesses and a little bit round the edges if you if you angle your cotton bud so if you want a reasonably clean but shaded look do a gloss coat first much less will be left behind if you want a properly dirty grubby grimy coat like I'm doing here and you'll need lots of cotton buds and every time you get a cotton bud out it's worth knocking the camera uh, if you want a proper grimy industrial look then either do this over a matte coat or just do it over the bare paint this is bare paint and bare unprotected decals now it does depend on the paint you use some paints are more durable than others if you were doing this over Tamiya paints they're as hard as nails you'd have no problems some paints are quite delicate and you know prissy and they'll easily come off so do some tests first to make sure you haven't used a paint that's really soft and delicate and if you have it's not the end of the world just go very slowly I'm going quite quickly here to demonstrate to you but just go slowly and gently it's not the end of the world and that is the technique that's as complicated as it gets the major advantage like I say is that this will be dry in about 24 hours so I can go ahead and do more weathering I can put a matte coat over it I can put a gloss coat over it I can do what I want with it I'm not gonna have to sit around with these hidden away in a plastic tub for five days so there you go if you're wanting to do some gunk washing uh, but you don't want to wait for five days get yourself some enamel weathering products I've not tried it with normal enamel paints they are thicker and have a denser pigment so I don't think it would necessarily work quite as well weathering products like the streaking grimes they are designed to look like dirt and dust so that's why I use the streaking grimes and uh, that's where I've had the best results so yeah if you want to do this but you don't want to be waiting around for days and days give it a try but that's going to do us so thank you very much for watching this very quick little tutorial go off make something awesome make something dirty and awesome I mean dirty as in unclean obviously behave and until next time adios amoebas <laughs>